Let's see. Let's go to safety first now. This week, uh, we're going to be talking about landing on rear risers. Cool. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and it's a phase that a lot of people uh, are, are in. And my, my first answer uh, to, to folks in this, this chapter of their evolution is you better play with your rears a whole lot. You better pull high and spend a lot of jumps where you get your hands on those rear risers and not just flare with the rears, but turn on them and slowly add the rears and bring it all the way to a stall and recover and stall and recover and then go ahead and do a dive turn where you collect that airspeed, go to the rears, and do it smoothly. Do a few of those. And then gather the airspeed, go to the rears, and push it real aggressively at high altitude where, I mean, if it really went badly, you could even cut away, uh, and just see where that edge is. Right? I call it looking for the monster under the bed. You really have to uh, explore the danger if you're afraid of something. It's the only way to really find out what's going to happen. You figure worst case scenario at, at 3,000 feet, you stall your canopy. You let your hands up a little bit and you know you hold on to the, the rear riser pressure and the recovery to limit the surge. And you, you get back at it and do it again. But if you don't explore that physically again and again and again in high altitude, the early warning signs, the sensations uh, don't show up for you. And then you plow right through that stall point when you shouldn't be. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. The other thing I find is really helpful is to, to do the maneuver near another canopy or other clouds where you dive down and level off, possibly even, um, you know, if you've got a, a nice flat cloud layer where you can sort of parallel to it and you can see the level off process. Um, I understand there's FARs uh, involved over U.S. airspace, but uh, I mean, once again, I find you know there's uh, there's legality and then there's morality. And my job is to help promote parachute safety. Uh, and if it means bending a rule that somebody else made that might not even exactly pertain to us, so that we can be safer as a community, I say go ahead and you know bend those cloud limits, but do it safely. Right. Think it through. Where is the Victor Airway? Is there air traffic in the area? Don't go into a thunderhead. That's, you know, a thunderhead is uh, it's a bad place to be for any aircraft. Um, I mean, as a pilot, I'm sure that you're you might be cringing about that idea. Well, I was gonna, that would be one other thing to consider is do I love my pilot? Do we do we, exactly? <laughs> well, you know, generally, if, if, if Vickers yeah. is flying, fuck it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, but do you see my point, though, is that we can benefit so much by having that relative reference. And another canopy, of course, is moving forward and downward, which means that as a relative reference where you're trying to create something that's analogous to the ground, a canopy isn't quite perfect. Unless he actually flares into level flight in that moment, you don't quite know. So then you go, well, what if I had instrumentation? All right, well, if you had a really good, uh, you know, uh, instrument that could tell you when you're in level flight, maybe. Maybe there's room for that in our sport, some sort of a variometer. Um, but at this point, we don't have that. So clouds are great. Um, but at some point, you have to try it near the ground. So my first thoughts around that are you, you use the rears when everything's perfect. And if you're low, if you feel rushed in going to the rears, then you shouldn't be using the rears. Because the whole point here is that you're not flaring with the rears. You're just changing the trim of your canopy to a flatter trim. So you're essentially creating a canopy that is a shorter recovery arc. And you're achieving level flight as a result of that flatter trim and shorter recovery arc and offering less drag in the transition to level flight. And, of course, once you've achieved level flight, the, the real goal, I think, should be to let your hands back up on the rears as, as much as you can, as long as you can, uh, to release that increased angle of attack and canopy shape distortion so that you can let it fly across the ground with your body real small and then slowly depress those rears again if you, if you feel good about it and ride that a little longer and then make the transition. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. So what about the transition from, from rears to toggles? It seems like one of the things we should be concerned about when we're, when we're doing this is not to drop a toggle in this process, yes. right? Yeah. So do you have a tip for, like, what's a good way to hold the toggles and the rears to avoid that? 
Yep. Well, a couple things. The one is that to me, my pinky and the finger adjacent to it, my ring finger, should never open. When I'm going to my fronts or my rear risers or scratching my nose, I should always have a muscle memory where those fingers remain closed. And so that that takes a little bit of practice. The other is to keep a little bit of a down angle to my fingers. So I, I'm sort of pointing my fingers at the ground as much as I can. Uh, and that reduces the chances of dropping a toggle. But if you're if you're loading up your rears by grabbing with, with your thumb and only three fingers... In, uh, or two fingers, even um, you're you're less likely to drop the whole toggle out of your hand. So, so, so your th- your thumb and your index finger and ring finger, yeah, are are what are what you're allowing to open up to grab the front or the rear riser. Yes, exactly. And your and, and your uh, your ring finger and your pinky finger are always closed around the toggle, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, that's yeah. I think that's that's an important safety measure. Make sure your toggle's all the way in your hand. Um, don't put it around your wrist because there is the possibility at some point that you'll have to cut away in a hurry due to a canopy collision, right? And so you don't want that around your wrist. But you do want your hand all the way in there and, and uh, physically rehearse opening and closing your hand with your pinky and ring finger remaining closed against your palm, right? So you get used to that memory. Uh, and so then when you do go to the rear risers, you you sort of, I like to stick my thumbs out. I call it hitchhiking from my rear as I sweep from the inside and I feel it out. And that process is something that you need to rehearse as well. Right? So the rear risers don't move, really, um, when you reach up for them. They're going to be in the same place every time. But you need to know where that is, where you, you reach up and you grab at the same location on the rears every time. Um, you do it without looking. Right? So that's, that's lots and lots of physical rehearsal under canopy. Once you've got a hold of them, do you suggest pulling down on them, or do you more push out on them? Like, what what direction are you manipulating the rears? Yeah, well, I, I my assumption would be that if somebody's using rear risers for their swoop, they're pulling their slider down, which means that if they push the rear risers outward and then downward, it's going to help flatten the canopy, which helps improve efficiency because you're reducing the anhedral arc that that front uh, arch shape. Uh, when you look from a front view, which is going to help you uh, recover. It's going to uh, improve the characteristics uh, in slow flight as well. So you do want to push outward and downward from that perspective, but also when you push out, you get a little more grab on the rears. If you're pulling straight down, your hands can slip. So I, I'm a fan of outward and then downward. Um, and that process, the speed of it varies widely depending on the maneuver. And, you know, there's lots of times where I hit it just right and I finish my turn at, at kind of just the right altitude and I make my body really small in the last phase of the dive aggressively and the reduction in body drag pitches the canopy and I don't need the rears until I've already swooped 100 feet. So that is a nice way to preserve energy because you're not distorting the canopy in your transition in the phase of your flight when you have the most drag because you're going the fastest. Sure, sure. So that's all yeah. about timing and knowing the recovery arc of your parachute. Yep, yep. And, and being really aggressive in the motion uh, to, to make yourself small, either leaning forward or bringing your knees up like most of us do. What if, what if you find yourself uh, a little bit in the corner? Is it, uh, is it maybe not a good idea to use rears to try and get out of the corner? Should we, should we be bailing to toggles? Yeah, well, if you, if you look at the polar curve... It's pretty clear that the stall speed on rear risers is higher than the stall speed on toggles. Not to mention the ability to move the pitch is much more powerful when you look at f- from the canopy's perspective. You are directly manipulating the pitch of the parachute. The angle of attack changes immediately. Whereas when I add toggles, I'm distorting the airfoil and increasing the drag and the lift of the wing. And I have to then have that wing pivot behind me on the pitch axis so the whole system is moving and that takes time which means that it's it's uh, harder to have a high speed stall on toggles so if you jam your rears down quickly because you're low it is uh, a higher probability that you're going to actually stall the thing at high speed and land flat on your back at the same time as your parachute so if you feel rushed don't use the rears one of the key tips that I, I find uh, is helpful um, based on watching uh, a friend of mine 
do a low turn, go to the rears, and just wait for the rears to work, and they just never worked. And so she plummeted right into the ground and broke her neck. She's oh. fine now. She's, you know, AFF in tandem and, and a, a fantastic skydiver, but she, in this moment, learned a lesson, and so did I. Physically practice switching from rears to brakes in a sharp, aggressive stab while you're still nose down. Right? So we practice switching from rears to toggles in level flight at 1G. But, but what would that be like you know, to, to still be in the dive, go into the rears while you're still looking you know, straight down at the ground and sharply stabbing those brakes to pull out of the dive that the rears were not pulling you out of? Right? So get good at that skill as well. All right. Well, Brian, uh, we're going to keep up with you at adventurewisdom.com. You've got the canopy courses up there now, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, we, uh, we go through phases where I don't have as many canopy courses on the books and I can get caught up on my sewing and then, you know, get into the next big season and I'll, uh, I'll have them every single weekend. Um, but, yeah, so if you don't see anything on the calendar, it could very well be that I'm just in a sewing cycle. Uh, talk to the people at the Drop Zone, collect a group of names, and I'll come. All right. Brian, thanks so much. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs>